So let's see now how we generate reports in ePlan. So first of all, of course, once you have your project open, you can see that because we actually ran the menu from previously seen generate project reports, we already have some reports like a parts list, a bill of material, uh, several different reports were actually generated. This was configured here under the reports generate menu. So if you open utility reports generate, you'll see here all the different report types that are actually predefined in this template tab. And what happens here is any predefinition in this template tab, when you run either the generate report here or the utility generate project reports, it actually covers the cable diagram, cable overview, connection list, everything that is in this list here will actually get generated. Now, when you create one of these, you basically have to select what type of report you want. You can specify a filter, you can specify a sorting criteria, you can even say that if I sort by, let's say, manufacturers, I could actually switch my pages, so create a new set of bill of materials for each individual one, and you can actually pick a specific form. If the form does not appear here because it wasn't loaded before in this uh, project, you can go to the Browse menu and then pick the form. The forms we pick are usually matching either in the metric environment here, the ones that have no ENUS, the ones that have an ENUS are typically used in the inch environment where we use a D size plot frames. In this case here, I'm going to use just a different type of form. There we go. And here it gets generated. Now the question pops up to specify where do I want this report block to start. If I want this in the pages that are reports, bill of material, and then let's say page 10, I could do so. Okay, it basically generates under reports, BOM starts at page, let's say 10 or 100, and you will see this information here. Now, everything you picked, all that information about the filter, the sorting, the new page, the form, can actually be seen here and could, can be preset or changed hereafter. You can also assign a manual page name. You can specify uh, page grouping, instead of using here the new page if the manufacturer changes, let's say we take this out, we could actually say under the page sorting, it says from setting. From setting, I'll show you in two seconds where it comes from. I can also choose from structure identifier and specify that for each mounting location, I have a separate bill of material. Let's say we leave it to settings. Let me show you where the settings are. Down at the bottom here, you can see the settings. Output to page, page sorting, summarize parts list, total. So it's exa exactly the same menu here that shows up. And the default form, if you don't specify any form, actually comes and is defined here. In some cases, it's interesting because we can use this column here combined. Let's say like cable diagrams. These are individual per cable. Um, you could combine them and it actually groups the different elements onto one page if it actually can do it. Then further down, we have, because we are handling parts, we have a question about breaking up assemblies. Breaking up assemblies, the default settings are here, is basically going to break up an assembly like a fuse holder with a fuse and a cap that are assigned with one part number but represent three part numbers. If you click here, break up assemblies, it's gonna break them up. The other thing you can do here is you can specify what type of parts you want. So you could actually specify that you don't want the terminals or you do want the terminals to show up because they may be ordered per project or they may be ordered more as like general from the electrician so you don't have to handle them per project. It's up to you. Um, once this is defined, of course, and the next time you hit the generate button, you can see a page 100 that gets generated, right? So the page 100 just generated one page. If I go here and say, please switch and create a new page for each new manufacturer. I sorted by manufacturer. I now create a new page for each time we have a new manufacturer. You will have X number of pages based and started at page 100. And of course here, as you can see, it's a little bit harder, but you have to basically zoom in. You can see that they all have different 
manufacturers. Allen Bradley, AB, the first one here is nothing. And then we go further down. We have probably some Harding. We have some Lap. Only one, one other one that is manually set. Now, if I take this out again, going back, reports generate. I guess you understand perfectly how that works now. Is let's say we take out the new page at new page of the property changes we generate now we get only one list and that one list is of course the complete list that is now sorted by manufacturers um, you can also create two different sets uh, a field wiring internal wiring here the difference is that the filter one says source and target equals to P and the other one says the opposite the opposite by using the negate button here so creating filters is quite easy. If we go back to our build material and I want to create a new filter, it's just basically creating a new filter. Okay, just call it new filter. And you can always at any point in time redefine that new filter here. And now the filter is not done yet. You have to specify your criteria. The criteria can be based on any given property. Could be, let's say, something like mounting location. Mounting location that shall be equal to something. You can type it in, or you can actually pick sometimes out of a list. It depends what property you just picked. Or you could also say anything that is not on mounting location by negating it. And there we go. If you generate this again, well, then, of course, the build material, we have to open it to see the difference. We only get a certain number of parts. We don't know if it's correct or not because we don't see the, uh, the details about the device tags. You want to see the details about the device tag? Just pick a form that will show that information. So if we basically go here and check out, we do have other forms. Now, some of these forms do show the information about the manufacturer, some of them don't. I'm just gonna take this one here and regenerate. You'll see the form changes completely entirely. And on the right-hand side here, we can see the different device tags and they make sense. They are actually motors and switches and lights and push buttons, everything that is not on the panel. If I go back, and I technically eliminate, again, just to show you, the filter. So here, I just eliminate it by picking the empty filter, so no criteria is actually chosen. Here we go. The list is far bigger, and all the components are there. That was generating reports.